This is not the video I wanted to make this week, but unfortunately for me, I've had quite a serious problem in my main tank that's meant I've had to invest a lot of time fixing the problem that I would normally have spent making these videos. Now, I was just gonna put out a post saying no video this week and normal service will resume in a couple of weeks time, but I thought it would be a really useful opportunity to share a video like this when things go wrong. Sometimes on platforms like Instagram and YouTube, reef keeping can seem like it's all red wine and roses, but that's really not the case and people like myself have just as many issues as everybody else. So I thought it was a really good opportunity to share with you when things go wrong, especially given the cause of this was me making a mistake. So with all that being said, I'm gonna show you the tank, talk you through the problem, show you what I've done to hopefully put the ink back in the bottle, and I'll tell you how things have got on over the last week or so. Let's get to the tank. So here we are with the tank then. And now a couple of weeks ago, I started noticing that a couple of my corals looked pretty unhealthy. They looked kind of like they were really thin and there wasn't much flesh on the, uh, on the SPS skeleton. And that to me is a classic sign of low nutrients. So I carried out a phosphate test, but it came back absolutely fine and I had quite high phosphate. Because of that, I decided to look at other causes. And what I did was I tested my salinity, which is the main thing you should be testing when you have problems. Now to test my salinity, I use the HANA checker. Let me get a better shot of that. The HANA salinity checker. Now this is a really good bit of kit. Uh, the only thing I do find is that you need to calibrate it quite regularly. And I tend to calibrate it probably every fortnight, every month at the absolute outside. But what I noticed was when I tested with that, I then calibrated it because it told me everything was absolutely fine. And when I calibrated it and retested again, it dropped three points. So it told me at first that the tank was 35 parts per thousand, then I calibrated it, and it turned out the salinity was at 32 parts per thousand, which is a huge drop. Now I don't really know what I'd done to cause that drop. I can only assume that I hadn't been calibrating the checker enough and I've been therefore mixing up my water change water to the wrong consistency. To be honest, I'm not convinced that's it, but I can't come up with a better explanation. But in any event, this tank got to 32 parts per thousand specific gravity, which is very, very low indeed and outside of the acceptable range. Now, fortunately, I don't think it's caused disastrous problems, but if I hadn't caught that and if it had continued to drop, it would have caused me major issues. And I've had corals stripped before, SPS corals, because of uh, salinity issues. So it really is no joke when you have salinity problems. So what I did then was I needed to raise my salinity and the easiest way to do that is to replace evaporating water with, instead of fresh water, you replace it with salt water. So then it slowly brings the salinity back up. Now I did that and I also did a couple of uh, water changes to nudge it up a little bit again and the water changes were with slightly elevated salinity water the theory being that the water in here is less salty than the water change water so it would bump it up slightly however after two days of panicking with that and getting that fixed slowly what I realized was uh, I, my alkalinity and pH was dropping and at that point I thought this is very strange why would my pH and alkalinity be dropping when my salinity is increasing? And that was when I realized that because, in fact, well, I'll show you what I've done. So what I'd done was, this is my fresh, oops, this is my fresh water reservoir, okay? And what I did was I just simply filled that up with salt water, meaning that the evaporated water would be replaced with salt water. Nice and easy, very little involvement from me. But what I didn't factor in was that I run a Kalkwasser stirrer, and the Kalkwasser stirrer works by drawing fresh water into the, uh, the, the cylinder, mixing it with Kalkwasser powder, and then dispensing it. And because Kalkwasser doesn't dissolve in salt water, Kalkwasser powder doesn't dissolve in salt water, what I was actually doing was filling that with salt water and nullifying the effect of the Kalkwasser. So basically my Kalkwasser wasn't doing anything, my alkalinity started to plummet, and my pH did as well. Now I realized what had happened when my alkalinity got to just under seven dKH, which is no problem whatsoever. Uh, and it was probably more concerning for me that my pH was crashing at a point when my corals were already pretty stressed. So last night I set about replacing that. I completely stripped down the calc stirrer. 
uh, and I set up its own container. So now it has this freshwater reservoir uh, and there's still salt water in the, the auto top off, but the Kalkwasser stirrer draws water only from the freshwater container. That has now put me in a position whereby everything is getting back on track. Over the course of about a week, my salinity has started to get back up and it is almost back up to the right point. It's now at 34 parts per thousand and that is a totally acceptable level. So it doesn't need to go up quickly and I'll stop when it gets to 35 parts per thousand. The other thing I did to make it a little bit quicker, I wanted to do this slowly because there's nothing worse than shocking a tank that's already got problems with a complete swing of parameters. So I wanted to do it slowly, but I didn't want to do it mega slowly. So what I did was I set up a fan. And the reason I set up this enormous fan was to increase evaporation. And actually that increased evaporation by about double. So it added an extra gallon of evaporation to the tank per day, about four liters. Uh, and that meant that uh, my salinity changed nice and slowly, but not as slowly as it would have done if I had just left it. Now the downside of that is that because at the moment in the UK we are still on the verge of winter, it's pretty cold, so at night the tank temperature was getting down to about 24 degrees when it normally runs at 25 degrees. So I had to plug in two additional heaters to keep up with the cooling effect of the fan overnight. That little temperature dip doesn't really make a difference and I don't think my corals uh, really minded, but any swings on top of a problem with salinity were causing me a bit of a headache. Now there were only two or three corals that were actually showing problems and I think I've now got to the point where they're looking okay again. They still look a bit stressed but they've stopped getting worse and I think they've turned the corner. It's not impossible that there will be a delayed reaction which is what happens with SPS corals sometimes and that you'll find in a couple of weeks time some of them don't make it through and some of them strip. So what I'll do is I'll put a pinned comment uh, below in a month or so's time so you can see a full update as to exactly how this went. Now given actually that the state of almost all of the corals is absolutely fine and they're looking good, you would be forgiven for thinking that I'm overreacting with this, but it genuinely was a close call and I think if I hadn't spotted the issue for a week or so more, I would have had stripping SPS corals. I've certainly had that before and there gets a point where they look, they're doing fine, 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 and then suddenly they go downhill. So I was really keen to get on top of this as quickly as possible, and I've invested several hours over the course of the last week putting this right and fixing it. Now it is worth noting that the fish all seem fine and aren't showing any ill effects, so it's just the corals that looked a bit stressed, and fortunately I had a couple that acted as a canary in a coal mine that told me there was a problem before it got any worse. So that is what's been going on with my tank this last week or two, and I wanted to show you because it was a really simple mistake on my part that I shouldn't have made letting salinity get away, but it did have a relatively serious impact and it could have been a lot worse had I not caught it. However, I now have this under control, so usual service will resume after this, and if you feel sorry for me, chuck me a like and subscribe downstairs, and I'll catch you next time.